You've seen plenty of our gardens over the years, so today we're turning the camera around on you. You sent in your gardens from all around the USA. We're gonna react and rate them. So at the very end of this video, we'll pick our personal favorite gardens, but let's go ahead and see what your gardens look like. Jacques, we're kicking it off with Gina from Berkeley, California, Zone 10A, just up the coast from us. Yep. What do you see? I see a nice little rose arch mixed into the garden and also a great seating area and vibe set. The vibes are immaculate in this one. Two umbrellas, couple lights. I'd love to see this one at night. It looks like a great use of backyard space. Absolutely. Next up, we have Janelle from Logan, Utah, Zone 5B, and it looks like a really stunning backdrop. I see the mounds, it looks great. The thing that I'm noticing here is the winter sown milk jugs. Basically, you cut the bottom off and you just throw seeds in the ground, direct sown, so to yep. speak, but you let the jug become effectively a little greenhouse, starts to seed on autopilot once the spring kind of comes in. Yeah, and that arch is gonna look incredible full then. Can't wait to see it. Next, our boy Jeff from South Carolina, zone 8A. This tickles my fancy, Jacques, in a big way. The <laughs> orderliness of it, it the does fact look. that it's all containers. I see some grow bags. He's using some tea posts. What do you see? Yeah, it's very interesting to me that they went full container. Maybe it's just to keep the soil fresh and healthy. Somebody who's growing something I love. Yeah, this guy is optimized. I can tell he, he might be an engineer by trade. It looks good, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Now we have Heather from Tully, New York, Zone 5B. Huge amount of space. Huge. And a nice big bed with some nice logs around it. A lot of potential here, a lot of sunlight. What I like to see over here on this right side is sort of like one of those circular pattern style gardens. Mm, yeah. A lot of different methods at play. Looks like there is a dapper gentleman in the back doing a little watering. <laughs> Heather, you've got a good gardener on your hands. Next up, we have Emanuela from Sailorsburg, Philadelphia, <laughs> zone 6A. <laughs> and this looks like a deer proof garden if I've ever seen one with actually an entertainment space. I know, entertainment space, a chicken coop, little garden vibe, great little safe space that you've carved out of this huge sprawling area. It looks incredible. All right, next we have Grayson, Arlington, Texas, zone 8. And this is apparently a clever reuse of materials. Mm -hmm. This one is an apple box or apple cart. It looks really aesthetic and nice. And honestly, on a concrete space shock, no better option than a container. And I know you like that neat organized setup. Come on, it tickles my fancy, what can I say? <laughs> Jenna from Orlando, zone 9B. This one's really cool, nice perspective. Looks like she's using a mix of our birdies raised beds. Shout out to you, Jenna, but also some of these less expensive options from just like a local tractor supply. Yeah, a little galvanized bed action, but I do love the perspective shot, all the rocks and the pathway. Looks like a nice little vibe leading up to that banana too at the end there. Yeah, the banana is stellar, Jenna. This is a beautiful sunset shot right here. Jennifer from Newnan, Georgia. We've hey, actually been, we've there. been there. Yeah. We've Zone been there. Shout 7B. out Jennifer. But this was, is what's amazing about this Zone 7B. It's a square foot garden. And you can turn any garden into a square foot garden. I know it is a sort of basic way to get started, but that was the beauty of it. I actually interned and mentored under Mel Bartholomew in person for a year without really knowing it. Epic wasn't really even a thing at the time. Right. I was helping him design a website. I learned a lot about how his method sort of propagated through the gardening world, and I still have a lot of respect for it. Jennifer, this garden looks beautiful. Garak from Anaheim, California, zone 10 or 11. I mean, come on, Jock, this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. Incredible amount of dragon fruit, and I gotta give them props because their trellises are still upright. We need to figure out how they did that because <laughs> it looks really nice and organized. Yeah, this actually reminds me a lot of my friend Richard of Grafting totally. Dragon Fruits Yard in that side yard, and he's actually somewhere in the Anaheim area as well. So maybe you guys know each other, but if not, you should connect because this is a gorgeous dragon fruit garden. Amy from Los Angeles. This looks like a cottage garden transported into the heart of LA. Absolutely stunning. Love the colors, the roses, the arch. I don't know what to say. It's a vibe, it's stunning. Truly does look transported yeah. straight from like the English countryside. Beautiful job. Amy. Love it. All right, we have Josiah from Western Colorado, zone 6B. The thing that sticks out to me, Jacques, is actually how well the garden is integrated into the overall outdoor living space here. It doesn't look like he's become absolutely obsessed like myself or you. <laughs> yeah. He's actually figured a way to balance it in the backyard. Little patch of lawn there, some beautiful planters. And I love the use of the fence to get some more sunlight and looks like some custom DIY beds built out of some simple planks. Perfect for growing herbs and using that space. Great nice job, work. Josiah. We have Justin from Caldwell, Idaho, somewhere 6B zone. And this looks like a clever reuse of tires. They're all <laughs> painted in unique ways. 
And it looks like it's definitely coming to life and filling in. Actually, a lot of schools and nonprofits yeah. will set up stuff like this where you get to repurpose materials. I've actually never grown into tire jock. Maybe something I would experiment with, but clearly Justin's making it work. This is a special one. My friend Erica, who actually has been an Instagram friend for a long time. She's from Gardner, Massachusetts, believe it or not, in zone <laughs> 5B. Jacques, what you'll notice is not only is it a huge space, yeah. but she has combined into a super birdies bed. Yeah. She's built an arch trellis over it, put lights on that, and that's where she keeps all of her tomatoes, where she said she got hundreds of pounds this year. I actually messaged her about it because it's so cool. I think it was like maybe 20 feet, maybe 10, but very sturdy, tons of tomatoes, also seeing a lot of seedlings, and that long bed is giving me envy because it looks like you put a lot of tomatoes on there, and I'm here for it. Fantastic job, Erica. Alana from Conroe, Texas, Zone 8A. See, a lot of really healthy looking plants. Everything looks super green. Wow. The squashes look amazing. The tomatoes, really tall sunflower. What strikes me in this one, Jacques, it's the textural layers exactly. that really make a garden. I've fallen prey to having my garden be a bit flat, a bit low, a little too uniform. And adding some of these pattern breakers and these texture breakers and keeping them as healthy as Alana has is a really good call. Stunning. All right, we have Cheryl from Adams County, Pennsylvania, zone 6B. Looks like she's rocking some birdies beds, but she also has some maybe DIY wooden beds. And actually the thing to me that's interesting, Jacques, is the garden kind of takes this turn. Yeah. And she's just making the most of the space that she has. Yeah, I love the cattle panel trellises. I've always wanted to set one up like you have now. Yep. And definitely it looks like they have deer there. Something I'm glad yeah. we don't have. <laughs> Seven foot fence for deer. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be a sad gardener. We have Madonna from Yulee, Florida, zone nine. Very lush looking garden, lots of nice healthy looking onions, looks good. The cool part is she's using the old sling method. It <laughs> yeah. looks like she's growing a birdhouse gourd here if my eyes do not deceive me. I too, Madonna, am growing a birdhouse gourd, but I have not slung it up like this. And when you grow a plant vertically, especially one that historically or botanically does not really want to grow that way, although right. you can train it, then this sling method is actually really clever. So nice job. We have Autumn from Poolsville, Massachusetts, zone seven. This is the quintessential cinder block DIY garden, actually a double keyhole shop. <laughs> yeah, I know, double keyhole. And they're also making use of all the pockets in the cinder hole. I, I'm seeing strawberries, I think, planted in them. Totally maximized space all the way throughout. What's really cool about this is she has full access and she's maximized her space. If Absolutely. this is the only space you had to garden, doing the double keyhole, meaning basically giving yourself about two feet reach in room, you just get as much space as you can possibly have. And then to your point, like putting the strawberries in, looks like maybe she could even add a few more yeah. down the and line. And they won't take up space. Yeah, not at all. Great job, Autumn. Courtney from Kansas Zone 6B, and it looks like I see the trellis to make you jealous. It's a very cheap trellis, and it kind of looks like she's put it on the back fence so she can attach it across multiple of our birdies beds. Absolutely, and grow bag heaven for sure right there. It's loaded up. Yeah, the grow bags to me, like lining it along a bed or a pathway is a great way to make use of space that Absolutely. probably is dedicated, looks like mostly to lawn, but you get to squeeze in a little more produce. Amber from Fallbrook, California, zone 10. This one's cool to me because she's breaking like the way I would design exactly. it. Exactly. Because I would not have put them in this sort of angular structure. I'd be very, I don't know, streamlined about it. And that's to my own detriment. I've learned from Jacques how to kind of design a more natural looking space. It's really cool the way that this all plays together. I like how it flows and like it leads you on a path because sometimes if it's too rigid, you're just gonna walk a straight line. But this kind of forces you to interact with more parts of the garden. Yeah. That's a really great idea. Check these collards and kales out. These look absolutely gorgeous. Look In really zone healthy. 10, that's not easy to grow. Good so work, good job, Amber. Sure. Next we have Dan from Broomfield, Colorado. Definitely somewhere we love because botanical interest. The is home there. of botanical interest, our seed company, zone 6A5B. What do you see, Jacques? So I'm seeing a lot of tomatoes, some healthy peppers, and a green stock that's fully loaded up in some greens. He's got the grill and chill set up, Dan. It's very lush. You can tell it's all containers because he's on concrete, yep. proof that you can make it no matter where you live. Small space, tons of garden. All right, we've got Carol from Ankeny, Iowa, zone 5A. So I have to say, I'm envious of these lower zones in the Midwest where you just get space like crazy. Your I don't have days. that here, but a really clever setup here with the birdies beds kind of making L-shaped shock. Yeah, and I like that they did the tall short. So they're probably maximizing the sunlight, how it travels. They mm -hmm. put the tomatoes in the shorter beds greater use of vertical space. What's cool about this too, is this is a very extensible garden. You can just keep adding that outwards as much as you want and just let the lawn be where the lawn is. So great job, Carol. We have Kelly from the Central Coast, California. One of my favorite parts in the country, Beautiful. for sure. And this right here, 
is speaking to me. I love everything <laughs> I see. What's cool about this one is you get in close, you see those planter blocks yeah. with the standard sort of two by six wood, one of the first videos I ever did, Jock. Yeah. World's easiest <laughs> raised bed. Planter blocks and two by six. I see a lot of corn flour, a lot of bachelor a lot of buttons. Uh, actually, looks like mostly a floral garden. Uh, a lot of nice little rock and stone pathways. Maybe that's a place where the water can travel yeah. if it was to rain. Beautiful garden. Mandy from Norfolk, Virginia, zone 8A. This is a deck patio garden. It looks like exclusively grow bags with some clever trellises going on, mostly edibles. And she's kind of organized it in this U shape so she can kind of access them at will. Yeah, this is amazing to see somebody make use of the space. It's probably also the sunniest part that they have access to. And it's amazing how much food you could get in such a small little spot. I might even, if I, if I was her, I might even throw some balcony railings mm. there and maybe just go bush full beans flowers. Oh, even okay. Bring in yeah, some yeah, pollinators, yeah. something like that. But regardless, Mandy, this looks awesome. We have Michael from Cleveland, Ohio, zone five, and a perfect little keyhole garden, just the amount of space that they probably need. But look, if you're a family of two, and you have the time to maintain a space like this, actually pretty big, nice looking garden. It's very orderly and he's probably getting more than enough produce out of this. So great job, Michael, got the deer fence as well. Here we have Noah Shepard from Davis Zone 9B. I've become addicted <laughs> to hammocks. If I see a hammock, I'm gonna lay in it. It's gonna take me yeah. regardless, but the garden also looks great and it just looks really happy. Everything looks really green. Anytime I see tomatoes, I'm happy. I see some peppers too. Take a look at lot. this though. Take a look at this. I think, oh. dare I say, he's growing something that's gonna be trellised up those lines there. Maybe hops? It is the way hops would grow though. So if that's hops, Noah, you'll have to let us know. Congrats, the garden looks really nice. Peter from Ohio, zone 6A. This is a full setup. This is a farm. This <laughs> is not a garden, it. Peter. Look at this thing. Look at the um, the bed sizes, the rows. He's got a frost cover on one. He's got shade cloth on another. I mean, what else do you see? You can Actually, it's almost endless. I see the straw bale gardens. Yeah. Love the hoop covers, the lighting coming through those trees. Wow. This is an amazingly neat organized garden and definitely is cranking out a lot of food. This is farm level. I mean, if it's not just grown for your family, Peter, I would imagine you might be selling this out to the local farmer's market or something or preserving a lot of this, but this is one of those idyllic type of setups that honestly I'm very envious of, so nice job. All right, we have Jordan from Wheeling, West Virginia, zone six. Another beautiful patio garden. Got the green stock in there. Got a bunch of, actually looks like our epic grow bags. Take a look. I think those are our epic bags. <laughs> I think they are. <laughs> what I like though is We're he's stacked. using some, some purchased products, of course, some of us from our store. So thanks Jordan for the support, but also just some tubs. Yeah. Just whatever you have. Some little pockets, like felt pockets here on the railing, cramming in. Looks like maybe some strawberries there. And still room toys. for flowers. Always room for flowers. It looks yeah. great. Tons of great use of that space. I love it. We have Kelly from Fallbrook, zone 10A. And this is really cool because it's all fully netted. I'm guessing you might have a bird issue because <laughs> it's stopping the birds. Great. I would imagine, Jacques, this this garden probably wasn't too expensive to set up. The no, PVC is relatively cheap. It looks like a lot of it was full DIY. She's got the galvanized planters um, that are a little bit more budget friendly. Yep. And look, it still works. And so great job, Kelly. All right, Sean. Groveland, Massachusetts, zone six. It is a clever pattern here. He's sort of going this like cornucopia shape. I want to say, and just building rows kind of in that in that pattern. I don't know, what do you see? I really like it. It looks like nice curves to it, nice tight beds, easy to organize. And I love that flow, that it, little it, pathway. It looks pretty big. I think he's got a little grill at the back yeah, side there or something maybe like a composter. That. Yeah. It's a cool setup. Love it, Sean. So we have Tina from Oregon City, Oregon, zone 8B. Amazing little sunset shot. And it looks like a custom bed setup that's perfectly turning into like a sort of circular Pieces coming of a to pie. a middle. Yeah, yeah sort of Very thing. Cool. This, this is the first one, Jacques, I think we've seen that's done that circular fragmented garden design that you see a lot of the time. I personally would say, you know, you put a little like table in the middle. Hey, you know, let that let neck. that plant energy hit you right in the sunset. You know? I don't know. <laughs> this one's really nice. Oregon sunsets, hard to beat. Well done. Sandy from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, zone 6A. A woman after my own heart here with the extensive use of wood chip mulch and then a nice little shed right there. That looks I was going to cool. say, I like their use of pops of color here. Like the door has like an accent color. This little table is nice and yellow. Mm -hmm. Kind of just helps balance the whole garden and just makes it look more vibrant. And the corn looking pretty Corn's good. Lo Corn's looking great. What I like is she's given herself ample space. Yeah. She, she has the space, so she's going to take the space and actually give herself the ability to wheelbarrow around and work in it in a really flexible way instead Sometimes of like- Sometimes I wish I had that. I know, <laughs> instead of cramming it in. Well done, well done. We have Liberty from Puyo Loop, Washington, hopefully I said that right, Zone 8B. 
Really cool. Looks like a garden that's been there for a while. The wood is nice and weathered. Everything looks lush and filled in. Cool part, Jacques, to me about the beds is she's gone with a wow. bit of a fancier design. Yeah. So she's gone vertical with the pieces that build the sides of the bed. And she's she's given herself that flat seat. It looks like a two by four, two yeah. by six type of flat seat. And I also like what looks to be these custom arches yeah, here. Yeah, I was going to say. Maybe grapes going up that, maybe something else. But nevertheless, like these height and texture differences and then putting green space yeah. uh, on them. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful look. <laughs> and the woods. Take me perfect. home. We have Sarah from Lambertville, New Jersey, zone seven. This one's really nice. She's gone with looks like pea gravel or decomposed granite as the floor here. She's done the picket fence to, to sort of segregate the garden from the rest of the yard. She has the space, looks like a shed in the background, but I see a really well laid out garden here, Zach. I can't tell if that's like a massive bunch of potato plants or like a fig tree from here. No, it's a potato. But it looks really, really happy. That looks like a huge potato. Right? Bed. Yeah, it, it does. It looks incredible. It does. It looks like she does have a couple of our birdies beds there, Trying but then also over. has done a couple of these like sort of DIY yeah. plank beds. And then also in the foreground here, just attached to the outside of the picket fence, really long fence railing planters that look also custom built. Yeah, and they're short flowers. They don't need much root space. Great use of the plants in the appropriate space. Yeah, think about the borders of your garden, right? Where, where borders happen in nature, there's a lot of biodiversity at the border of things. And it's sort of, when you're building a garden, you're mimicking that. And so you want to make sure you're bringing things in at the borderlands so that you can get pollination, or you can get pest control from the native environment. Now that we've seen all these amazing gardens, which one's your favorite, Kevin? So I have, I'm cheating, I have two, because I have to, Classic. you know, I have to dance with the different situations that we all live in in life. So Peter from Southwest Ohio, Zone 6A, this ticks all my boxes for that idyllic, production-focused farm life with a ton of space, looks like a beautiful country home. Clearly this guy knows how to grow. He's got all sorts of different setups going on. This is like, to me, the full expression of a production garden for your family. But I also like Jordan's because I like to showcase that you can grow anywhere. And this is to me is a jam packed and crammed <laughs> yeah, balcony, which it. is actually a good thing. What about you? So my favorite is the Central Coast Garden. For me, I love the woods in the background. I love how dense it is, the different heights, colors. That just to me is where I want to be at some point. I yeah. want a nice Central Coast Garden, huge, filled with flowers and life. You guys sent us gardens, not only from the USA, but all around the world. So make sure to subscribe. We're gonna be doing the international edition of this video soon. Stay tuned, good luck in the garden, and keep on growing.